two keys if you want to be relevant and you want this generation to hear you there are two keys you need number one blessed be the name of the Lord you must engage the power of a transformed mind please write it down please write it down and I want you to listen to me carefully you want to be relevant to serve the purposes of this generation you must you must rise to a level of thinking that is so refined by the word of God the Bible calls it a transformed mind the law of the mind is a key that we must learn if we want to be relevant not just the anointing not just prayer not just fasting Proverbs chapter 23 let me give us a few scriptures Proverbs 23 and verse 7 I will continue to drum the issue of mindsets because it is the key listen carefully many believers they are born again our spirits are alive but our minds are dead and we will never never be relevant in a generation where we are not alive in our mind in fact the bible says that it is with our mind that we serve the lord our minds a generation that is mentally depraved will not be relevant you will never be able to communicate kingdom relevance in this generation when you are mentally depraved and i'm not just when i talk of mental transformation i'm not just talking of passing through the 6334 system many of you already have but we are still victims of that limitation there is a siege in fact the attack of satan is such that he blinds the minds of people he doesn't have to tie your legs he just ties your mind and you are bound are we together Read with me, it's projected. The Bible says, For as he thinketh, just the A part, for as he thinketh, the summation of your perspectives, your viewpoints, not just your way of reasoning, uh -uh, it's more than that. Most of us here, and, and with all due respect and honor, I come from the middle belt, what you call the north. A number of us here come from the south, east, south, south. We come from different cultures. Listen carefully. And all of those cultures advocate a way of life. Are we together? There are dimensions to culture that are very fruitful because they, they encourage empathy, respect, and all of that. But there are dangerous antichrist dimensions, mindsets. Are we together? That spring from our different cultural experiences. Irresponsibility. Pride. Are we together now? Unseriousness. Entitlement mentality. All of these things, most of us receive them from culture. And if you want to influence a generation, then you must have the fortitude to be humble enough until God transforms you so that you look like a citizen of the kingdom, not a descendant of your culture. For the sake of sociological identification, yes, I come from A and B. But for the purpose of influencing a generation, you must look like the kingdom you represent. There are many people who are not kingdom minded enough to mentor a generation. Our cultural biases still eat into our decisions. Our cultural biases still become um, the platform upon which we want to be relevant. It wouldn't happen that way. Hmm. The law of the mind. We must allow ourselves to be transformed. Our experiences have been part of the systems that built our mindset. Many of us have, you've heard me say it again and again, and I will continue to drum it because it's important. Let me give you an example. Um, I think it was, it was, it was Mommy Oje, my dear Mommy. Um, we, we were sharing something very briefly yesterday. Please come, sir. Stand here, Sam. Stand here, doctor. Watch this. Let's assume that this gentleman, God forbid, that's Sam, I love you, God forbid, God forbid. Let's assume that he's an armed robber, threatening people at every highway. Are we together? Let's assume 
this gentleman, well, let's not assume he really is. He's a doctor. Are we together? Responsible doctor, man of God, and everything. Are we together? Now, watch this. Carry a gun and shoot two of them. Are we together? They are lying down dead now. Are we together? Do you call this an armed robber dead body? You call it a what? Dead body. Do you call this a doctor dead body? So who was really the doctor? And who was the armed robber? Was it the body? Who is really an apostle? This? The construction of your understanding is you. Not your body. You can do all kinds of things to your body which is relevant. And let this old man remain. And you are still the you of before. When God finds people, listen. When God finds people, He doesn't just save them. He exposes them to the truth that leads them to a higher dimension. A higher viewpoint in life. And let me tell you this. Transformation has nothing to do necessarily with geographic location. The advantage of geography is exposure. It exposes you to the opportunities that stimulate a need for transformation. But doesn't in themselves bring transformation. Are we listening this morning? So this gentleman, all of a sudden, he's dead. And then, this body, although a doctor, you can't wake this body and say, please body, treat me. It's gone. So the doctor was not the person. The doctor was the mindset. Did they ever give you a new cloth when you pass through the university? Did your lecturer ever touch your cloth? And say, remove your own and wear my own. Did he even ever touch you? He kept speaking through your ears to your mind. And after a few years, they gave your mind a degree. It's just that it's your hand that held it. That's why those who came and were mad, although their hands were still there, they couldn't receive it too. Because something happened to them. Have you seen an intelligent person, sometimes even a professor, all of a sudden begin to lose sanity because of some kind of ailment? Are we together? And that man sits helpless. Yet that was someone, professor par excellence. What happened? His hands held me, his hands held me, something happened to his mind. We have received many miracles. The miracle our generation needs is the miracle of the mind. We, we think the greatest miracle is just rising up from wheelchair and don't, please, I don't trivialize I know many of us are trusting God but let me tell you this, brothers and sisters you can lift a man from the wheelchair you can open a blind eye you can open a deaf ear and leave that man, he goes back his situation remains the same because you, you treated every other condition and left his mind lay your hands on your head and prophesy in one minute Lord, I'm tired of this level. I need a miracle. I am where I am in spite of the fact that I am in Lagos. In spite of the fact that I am in a place of abundance. There is something about my perception. Spirit of the living God this morning arise over my mind. Arise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Now some come Let's assume Sam is Emeka's father. Are we together? Emeka turns to Sam and says, Daddy, you are a wicked man. Now watch this. Your dad has gone to be with the Lord. And you look at that innocent body you once called wicked. And you hold it there. The body can no longer slap you. So who was the wicked man? Talk to me please. Who made the hand rise to slap you? There was an understanding. There is no body that is really bad it is a programming our bodies are executors of our mindsets if I still today there is an understanding that sponsors that action your body is a slave it executes whatever has been programmed there so if I am lazy today and I don't take my life serious 
telling me, get up, get up and move forward. It's not the way. You are forcing the body to move. The body is a slave. Educate my mind. Change my viewpoint. Influence me. And something will make me stand up. In Ezekiel chapter 2, the Bible says he told someone that was lying down, stand up. But the person could not stand up. And then the Bible says, the spirit entered me when he spake, when he spake, when he spake. An information with an anointing upon it came and caused me to stand. We don't just rise. Knowledge makes us rise. We don't just run away from trouble. And information makes us to see the danger of trouble. Is God speaking to us this morning? Mindset. Your life in leadership, in business, in ministry will be a reflection of your perceptions. A reflection of your ideologies. A reflection of your understanding brothers and sisters please hear me understanding is a real miracle and I thank God for the grace that he has given me to walk in the anointing and in the demonstration of the spirit otherwise you would have thought this message is just an excuse for not being anointed it is a real message for a generation if we are bankrupt in understanding Satan can allow us to lift everyone from wheelchair and then one person in a position of influence who had adjusted his mind enough will crush everything you are doing with one policy with a dimension of influence I have said it again and again and it's my covenant with God that I will never pastor a people with no influence why choose influence or anointing when both are important are we together?